Aloha, and welcome to the Secret Art of Huna podcast, where I'll be sharing how to use Huna, the carefully guarded spiritual, energetic, and healing practices of the ancient Hawaiians, to help you transform those bits of your life that aren't working, to help you find your purpose, or maybe just to help you dump emotional baggage. I'm Dr. Jane Lewis, and 20 years ago, I was burnt out, depressed, unfulfilled, disappointed, directionless, and deeply, deeply miserable. Huna enabled me to change all that, and so I now share it with whoever wants to experience a more joyful, fulfilling life. Well, aloha and welcome to The Secret Art of Huna. And today I'm going to be talking about trusting the unseen. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, the unseen wasn't something we really trusted in both in my family and at school, really what we trusted in was the rational, the things that could be seen, the things that could be proven experimentally. And that was where all the trust was. Things that couldn't be seen like energy, well, no, didn't exist really. The funny thing was that when it came to God, uh, who obviously is not usually seen, then there was trust in God. You could trust in God, but you couldn't trust in energy. The irony of it didn't strike me at the time as a kid. I just listened to what people told me and assumed that they were right. And it wasn't until much, much later that I started to believe in energy. And in fact, I stopped believing in God because I couldn't see him. And I started believing in energy before I regained any kind of belief in a, in a higher power. But that's another story. So I spent much of my life being an energy denier. And as I was an energy denier, funnily enough, I didn't really feel energy. So back in the early 90s, I trained as a massage therapist. I wanted to, I wanted a back pocket skill to take on a round the world trip. So I studied massage, aromatherapy, Indian head massage, stress management and craniosacral therapy, all things where you were working with the body. And when I felt anything under my hands, I always assumed it was tissue movement. I assumed it was movement of fluid in the body, but energy, no. And I ended up teaching some of these topics. And sometimes, especially with cranial sacral therapy, you'd see people with their, with their hands around near the head of uh, the patient, the client, and their hands would be off. I'm going, no, 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 put your hands on, but I'm sensing the energy. No, 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 put your hands on the client. So I really was an energy denier on a grand scale. And it was only, it was really through cranial sacral that I started to begin to trust that there was an energy field and that I could feel that energy field and start to feel it and tune into it. And then, of course, moving into Huna, the more I I got into Huna, the more I became aware of energy, the more I believed in energy, the more sensitive I became to energy. But I can remember the first Huna workshop that I ever went to. And we did some work with um, with with the elements and, and working with creating something with the elements. Everybody else in the room seemed to be able to see it or feel it. Me, neither. Couldn't feel it couldn't see it, couldn't feel it. And that was hard because it made me feel less somehow. Everybody else in the room, no problem. Me, problem. So over time, I developed the belief and the ability that I had, that I am able to tune into energy. Now, near where I live, there is a stand, a stone circle, standing stone circle called the Rollwright Stones. It's about five miles away and it's a small circle and a lot of people haven't heard of it. It's very familiar to the dowsing community. It's familiar to people who are interested in the uh, geomagnetic stuff in the UK and of course tourists and of course locals, although a lot of locals have never even been there. But it's not one of the, it's not regarded by most people as one of the great monuments. It's not like Stonehenge, except that energetically, it is a very powerful place. Now, over the years, I've been going up to the, up to the roll rights. I'll go up there on occasions like the solstices or Sawain 
or Beltane, th- th- those events. But sometimes I'll just feel called. Something will say to me, hmm, need to go up to the roll rights. Time to go to the roll rights. And I will do that. And while I, at the, at the more energy sensitive I've got while I've been going up there, I've become attuned to the fact that there is energy. It's not just a set of stones standing in a circle with a couple of off liars. It's energetic. It's got a force. I went up there on Friday because it was the solstice. And for the first time that I've ever seen, there was a warden up there who was talking about the energy of the place and was letting people take dousing sticks and try dousing. As I say, I felt energy there. I know there's energy there, but I've been quite general in the sense of my, of of the energy. With these dousing sticks, I went up and I started dousing in areas that, that the, the Ron the Warden had pointed out. And I was amazed. I'm a very visual person. So I do tend to trust the evidence of my eyes. And I've never used dousing sticks before, but when I used them, the movement was extraordinary in some places and in other places not. So in some places you take the two sticks and in some places the two sticks would just cross like that. In some places, maybe one would cross, the other was going forward. In some places they'd just quiver. And in some places they just stayed pointing forward. It was different in different places. And of course, that's because a lot of the energy in the roll rights, there are spirals of energy. It's not just a, as we might think of a, a, a continuous flow, but there are also spirals within the flow. At the center of the ring, when you go into the, the, into the very center, there are no stones, but there is an extraordinary, extraordinary energy at the center of the ring. And I've kind of felt it before, but this time I really felt it. And I took out my little dousing rods, which obligingly went and crossed. So I I could, and I could feel it in my body. And I started really tuning into my body because that's where I know that I I can feel the energy in in my stomach when when I feel energy tuning into my stomach and really feeling it. In fact, it was so strong that I actually felt quite sick. So I stepped out of the circle. That's the first time I've ever experienced it like that. And that's the first time I've ever been really open to experiencing like that and expecting that I will experience it in a, in a powerful way. A couple of interesting things that the warden said was, the center of the roll right stones, that very core, if you stick a temperature probe in, sometimes it's about three degrees warmer in the center than it is 50 yards, 50 yards further on. There's a very deep water table at a very deep level, and that creates an energy force. And then you've got the, 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 the earth energies themselves. That was on Friday. On Sunday, I went back again to the Rollwright Stones because I just wanted to know more. And talking to the warden, I learned that another place that is a very powerful energy center that I wasn't aware of is Salisbury Cathedral. I'm running a Huna retreat in July, and the retreat is going to be within the grounds of Salisbury Cathedral, within literally within a stone's throw of the cathedral itself. Now, cathedrals in general, we know, are built on, are t- typically built on old energy centres. So what would happen was you'd have an energy centre, the ancient people tapped into that centre. Very often they'd put a stone monument or something over it. And then the other faiths would come and put a wooden something on it. And when Christianity came in, they started to build these much bigger buildings, uh, stone buildings. So most of the cathedrals and many of the churches are built on energy centres. Salisbury Cathedral, apparently, is one of the most complex energy centres in the UK. And I just felt so emotional about that, the fact that unknowingly uh, I've arranged a Huna retreat in very close to 
one of the most powerful energy centers in the UK. So it also led me to reflect on what happens in terms of trusting the unseen as far as source is concerned or higher power or um, higher consciousness, whatever, whatever name we give to that. One of the things that I spent a lot of my life not doing was trusting in higher power because I didn't really believe in it. But again, as I've got into Huna, I've become more aware, more conscious of a higher consciousness, of a higher power, of a higher something. And I've become more trusting in it. Can't see it. I can see the results of it. I can feel the results of it. For instance, these energy centers in nature, but I can't see it. So trusting in it for me has been a difficult journey because I'm not inclined to trust something that I can't see. The more I've trusted and learned to trust in source, the more things happen, the more things manifest, the more things change. Synchronicities happen. So you've probably had this experience of a loved one in your family who's not near, who's, who's away from you. Um, might just be that they're, they're, they're in a different building or they're down the road, but or they're, they're not by you. Could be a child. It could be a sibling. It could be a partner. Somebody that you, you're, you're close to could be a friend, somebody you're really close to. And you think, Oh, I must phone them or I must text them. And no sooner has that thought passed your brain than you receive a text from them or you receive a phone call from them or you phone them, you text them and you get something back that says, oh, I was just thinking of you. We know it happens. We have those experiences. But what I find has happened, the more I trust source, the more the more I believe in source and allow myself to give it up to source the more I find that things happen, synchronicities happen, the more I find that I can manifest. I can start to bring what I want in. And the more, the more life becomes beautiful, the more life becomes joyful, the more life has purpose and point. So if you're like me, and you struggle with trusting the unseen or trusting the unfelt, then sometimes it's a question of surrender. It's a question of just saying, okay, I can't see it. I can't feel it, but I believe it's there and I'm going to allow it to work its magic, to, to, to have its impact. I'm going to allow myself to give stuff up when things aren't working give it up to source. I'm going to allow myself to do that and allow myself to realize that sometimes miracles happen in interesting ways. I've mentioned this before, but I was, when I was doing the hospice work, I was talking to somebody, a relative of theirs had been, a loved one of theirs uh, was near the end of life and was talking about how they had prayed for help and they were angry with God because help hadn't come. They were, they, 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 were, they, they were Christians, angry with God because help hadn't come. And then when, as they were reflecting at the end of life, they remarked that help had come. It had come in human form. All the helpers that had helped them in, in, the, in the last days of their, their life. But because it didn't look like a miracle, they didn't see it as help. So it's also about where we look and where we notice when we put up a prayer, when we, we ask for help from source, we give it up to source. Noticing what comes and being open to the fact it may come from all sorts of unexpected directions. It may not look like a miracle. It may not look like synchronicity, but be open to the possibility. Because when we do that, life becomes more joyous and, 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 and just amazing. And if you want to learn more, ladies, come to the retreat, come to Salisbury 22nd to the 26th of July, and let's go and experience some of that energy that I've been talking about, as well as learning about Huna and the profound way it can develop your, your link with higher consciousness. Otherwise, I'll see you along the way. And 
look forward to hearing what you thought of this video. Lots of love. Take care now.